Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Cavalier Insider. It's been a long hiatus. We're going to talk some hoops today. I'm Whitey Reed, joined by the legendary Jerry Hooty Radcliffe. And uh, Hoots, Virginia, off to a nice uh, 3-0 start here. They've looked uh, real good in, uh, so far. Um, granted, the competition level hasn't been uh, all that great. They beat uh, JMU and Norfolk State by, by 20 points, 28 points each. And then on Tuesday night at JPJ, they um, easily took care of South Carolina State. What have been your general impressions of this team so far? I think uh, the thing that struck me the most, Whitey, is this team seems maybe the, like the most athletic team I've seen from Virginia and maybe in my time here. I mean, there's so many good athletes on this team. Uh, and, and even though there's not a lot of difference between this year and last year, I think some of the freshmen is, is what has added into that athleticism with Hall and Wilkins and, oh gosh, who are we talking about? Shayok and Stith. Shayok and Stith. Mm -hmm. I mean, those guys are all athletes. Uh, and Justin Anderson's shooting has blown me away so far. I don't know if it'll continue like that, but uh, man, that guy's red hot from three-point land. I know he said that all the the guards particularly, and I guess some of the forwards too, were working really hard on shooting with Coach Bennett this summer. It's really paid off, but uh, I think that's probably what struck me the most. And of course, they they have incredible depth again. Right, and that that's kind of the, the big question, I guess. We, you mentioned the depth is uh, how Coach Tony Bennett massages all these um, kind of, I guess, egos for lack of a better word, um, and, and gets everybody the minutes. Right now, he's using a, a 10 man rotation, which, you know, truth be told, he's probably going to trim that down to about eight or nine, I would imagine, come conference play. Um, and that's going to be interesting to see who kind of sneaks into that rotation and who kind of is right on the fringe of it. Right now, it could go any number of directions. I know we were talking about it during the game last night. Um, kind of what, what, he's, what is he going to do? Is he going to give those minutes to Evan Nolte or Isaiah Wilkins? Is, is Mario Shayok going to get some of those minutes there on those last couple spots? I guess only only time will tell there. Yeah, he, and, you know, he, he has the option if he wants to to play three or four guys uh, guards at the same time if he wants, I guess. And it's it must be nice to have that kind of, uh, of choices. But, you know, I, you know, I don't see how he could play – Ten either once they get the conference play, unless these guys just keep developing and playing well, and then you know who knows? Maybe he'll have to do what Kentucky's doing and bring them in and, and lines like a hockey team, with five guys at a time, and right, which is what he was doing a little bit last night, and, yeah. and through the other two games, just subbing in five five guys at a time. Yeah, I mean, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe he can continue to do it because you know there's we've seen some teams in the ACC that have already struggled a little bit. I think Clemson lost at home to Winthrop or somebody the other night. So, yeah, there are probably times where he can play 10 guys. I guess the encouraging thing right now, if you're a Virginia fan, is, you know, the big question, obviously, heading into this season was missing Joe Harris and, and Akeel Mitchell. Who's going to step up and, and kind of fill some of that production um, and all those minutes there? And, and so right now it looks like it's, uh, it's, it's sort of a little bit of everybody who's picking up the slack, which is is a good way to do it because, you know, then you don't have too much pressure on, on any one player. It's sort of a sum of the parts kind of mentality. That's true. I mean, Anderson's look good. Brogdon is as steady as ever, maybe even more so. Uh, Perante's, uh, even though he's only played in the last two games, it looks like he's kind of holding back a little bit offensively. Uh, so he's yet to break out, and we know he will. Uh and all these other guys, like you said, fill in nicely. And and, and up front for a kill, you know, Gill and, and Atkins have done a pretty good job. And it looks like Toby has made some strides. And then I guess the one other thing we should touch on since we were talking about the depth is there was a, the, the decision to redshirt Jack Salt, the, the kid from New Zealand, who, who you know quite well. He went down there and did that piece in, in Auckland on him that one time uh, via remote satellite. Um, I bought this shirt. Down there, while well, I was, uh, you know, in Australia visiting my buddy the shark. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the decision was made, though, Hoots, to redshirt Salt, and you know, there was some thought that maybe B.J. Stith, uh, the son of the UVA legend Brian Stith, might get redshirted, and 
you know, um, I, they, they, Tony decided not to do that. To me, I was a little bit surprised that he didn't redshirt two players. Maybe not that he didn't necessarily redshirt stiff, but that he didn't maybe try to redshirt two guys in that class. Not only to break up the classes a little bit, so because he only got one freshman coming in next year, the big man Jared Reuter, um, but also just because if you look at through these first three games, Stith, you know, he's he's getting mop up duty here. He's barely getting into these games that they're winning by twenty plus points every game. Is he going to see any meaningful time this year? Would he have maybe better been better off taking the red shirt year? I think the answer to that is yes. I, uh, if he's only going to get mop up minutes I don't see that he's going to add a whole lot to this team unless he makes some dramatic improvement between now and January so I think it may have been a, a wasted opportunity to to redshirt him and, and add to the depth next year and uh, you know I, I hadn't seen Stith that much in high school I heard he was a really terrific player but so far he just seems to be a little behind some of the other freshmen and, and in that case I, I think why waste a guy's year and just, you know, unless you don't think he's going to add any value down the road. But, uh, you know, knowing Brian Stith, if, if BJ is anything like his dad, he's going to find a way to get better and contribute to the team. But I think it might have been best served for him and the program to let him wait a year and just uh, get better and see what happens. Well, that was definitely my thinking as well. Um, and I did a story that appeared in our paper a couple of days ago. And BJ um, has has a, has a great attitude about it and doesn't seem like it's going to affect his uh, how hard he works or anything like that one way or the other. He really seems to have the, the right mindset about about um, you know uh, maybe not playing that much this year. And you never know with injuries and that kind of thing. Every year it seems like Virginia basically get somebody who has some kind of foot problem or something. True. So it's not out of the realm he could sneak into that rotation. Um, closing out this show here today, I guess we should take a look at Friday's opponent, George Washington. As you talked about in your column in, in uh, Wednesday's paper, uh, this will be Virginia's first real test. GW was an NCAA tournament team last year, and uh, this is going to be a much different kind of challenge than Virginia has seen to date. Yeah, apparently they went on the road and mopped up Rutgers pretty good, who also was a tournament team last year, I believe. So, um, And uh, what I wrote a lot about was, you know, a lot of people, the buzz has been ever since the JMU game, knowing that Virginia was going to play a few rent uh, victims, as I like to call them. Uh, GW doesn't fit in that category. They're a pretty decent team, and, and the buzz has been about, you know, Mike Toby, how much better is he, how much more physical is he, and he's going to get a test against Kevin Larson, a, a 6'10 guy from Copenhagen, <laughs> come uh, Friday night. And, uh, you know, it was interesting talking to Toby. That, uh, this guy must be pretty mobile because he said that he had heard or read or seen a scouting report or something where GW had ISOed uh, Larson at the top of the key and run a 1 4 and set ball screens for him so he could do his thing. If that's the case, uh, that could be right up Toby's alley because he says he's a lot more mobile now and he's making better slides defensively and stronger. So it, it should be a fun matchup to see in that regard, I think. A couple interesting subplots to that game, too, is Larson is a former high school teammate of Justin Anderson's at Montrose Christian, and mm -hmm. uh, Joe McDonald, uh, the GW point guard, played with Darion Atkins uh, at the Landon School. So uh, some, some connections there for that game. Uh, well, that's going to do it here, Hoots, for our very first episode. Hopefully we'll get to do this a little more regularly now that the season gets into full swing. Um, for Jerry Hootie Ratcliffe, I'm Whitey Reed. We'll see you next time. Should be fun.